Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, good whatever time of day it may be for you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Layback Gamer, and what is a special offer? Oh, just that. Anyways, um, I'm back with a... Well, this isn't actually another legend. It's a card review video. I'm up very late to the party for this, but, but the m most recent monthly reward card has came out a couple days ago, and I'm just going to, you know, do a quick review of it. Because, well, uh... I missed it when I came out, but first I'm going to register for the event. And it looks like any cards from 2016 and 2017 in this Blast from the Past event. Yes. So I think, um, if I'm correct, this playset is going to be, well, it's going to include some of the promotionals, but we will be getting access to, if memory serves, we had the core expansion. I think we had the Dark Brotherhood and Skyrim and clockwork city if i remember we might not have had clockwork city no we definitely yeah we definitely had clockwork city we had the core set skyrim and dark brotherhood and some of the promotional cards uh oh and uh uh madness collection or the madhouse collection so i'm kind of excited to be honest i, I can't wait for that one but anyways we're here just for just a quick video I'm not going to go too much into detail since I kind of already formed my opinions of the card. Yeah, I forgot that was a card. Uh, I am talking about the Prankster Mage. A 5 mana Khajiit for 5-3. I kind of think it should be... Oh, wait, it is a mage, so... Oh, you know, that this is actually kind of a very cheeky reference to... Uh, Jaskar, who was a Khajiit in the Bruma Mages Guild that would like to play pranks on Jensen, who was the, uh, who was the head, the, I guess the, uh, Guild Hall leader. So she led, uh, the Bruma Guild Hall. And then, you, of course, he had Guild Halls all across and the Arcane University. And, yeah, so he was, he played a bunch of pranks. He was the potential Archmage, and you kind of get to that point after the the end of that quest line. Uh, one of your tasks, in order to get a recommendation from Jinsen, was to find Jaskar. Now, he was pranking, and the reason why this is called Pranks of Mage, and he looks like he's invisible, is because one of his tricks was, I guess, a, uh, a permanent invisibility spell. So he just was always invisible to everybody. You couldn't even see his outline. That's how invisible he was. You, you couldn't see his outline. It was just a profile of him walking around. If you met, like, a kid, he did it walk around. And if you had the, uh, uh, a life tech spell, I think you might have been able to see him. But aside from that, if you just bu randomly bump into him, he just, he would say, go away, you'll ruin everything. And eventually... After you do a couple things for his friend, I, f I forget whose name is, but he dispels the invisibility spell and you get Jaskar back. And to do that, you had to steal a manual from Jinsen's desk, which is kind of reminiscent in the background. So, yeah, quite a bit of story behind a single card. Anyways, Ward, when Prankster Mage has Ward, he has Guard. When Prankster Mage his Ward is broken, he gains cover. And I think that is pretty cool. It's a nice card, especially... Well, I like the effect. It's uh, definitely worthy of the title. It's... Oh, uh, my cover's been... My Ward's been broken. Time to disappear under cover. Oh, my... Uh, I got Ward back. Time to tonk for everybody. I like the effect. And me and Levin were discussing this the other day when I first saw him. I thought it was a a card that I missed from uh, from it's not Isles of Madness. So come on, you could think uh, the Elsewhere expansion. What is it called? Uh, Moons of Elsewhere. I thought this was a card from that when I first saw it, and immediately. He didn't recognize it, but it is indeed the monthly reward card, and I think it's pretty good for uh, Dagoth decks. We did we discussed about this. I think it's pretty good. It gives another uh, option at the five mana cost, aside from uh, Hand of Dagoth. You know, Hand of Dagoth is pretty good. He's got Breakthrough Drain and Ward, but possibly a 
pretty high value target. I would argue to say this is also, but the five the uh, five attack can also help to trigger uh, cards that require uh, that can gain you know bonus effects with cre if you control a creature with five power or more, like the Ascended Sleeper down here. So I think it's a pretty good addition for that that type of deck. You definitely want to run it where you can get the ward, so you can possibly gain give the creature guard. And then, of course, when the ward breaks, you just... Uh, he loses the guard and goes into... and gains cover, so he guarantees that he's not going to die to a creature that turn, unless your opponent has a hard removal or silences it, but I think it's a... overall, I'd have to say this is a pretty good card, a pretty decent card. It's going to see play in Dagoth decks. I don't know if it would see play in uh, Telvanni decks at all, or... It might see some play in Dominion decks, but it definitely isn't going to see play in Assassin unless you're going some crazy type of Assassin. But yeah, and it and it also has the bad benefit of having well, at least like quite a bit of a quite a lot of meaning just in the artwork of one card. So if we go to promotion, I don't. I'm pretty sure some other cards have had that, like Black Hand Messenger, obviously. Like a messenger of the black hand, you can kind of think of Lucien Lachance with that. Emperor's Blade, you do eventually. Oh, that's not a promotional card. Oh, that is a promotional card. Never mind. Uh, you eventually get to become a member of the Blades in Oblivion. Uh, let's see here. Nothing really that ha that. Like, see, you can connect some of these cards to. Uh, uh, to others, like some of the other little bits and scraps of lore out there. But I'd have to say that definitely Prankster Mage is a, a pretty clever nod off to Jaskar, which I don't think we're going to be seeing. Uh, there was also one other thing I wanted to uh, cover as well, if I can pull it up. So let's uh, just quickly pull open the Steam page. And it's Joffrey will be joining the will be joining the roster for Elder Scrolls uh, Jaws of Oblivion expansion, which is awesome. And the card effect, yeah, that's pretty cool. You get to choose another friendly creature, so similar effect to uh, Zumong Foon, except like a similar like you got to choose this creature, and it lot well, I guess really. Kind of similar effect to what a lot of the choose the creatures and it it, pa it just passively happens until you know the card's dead. But damage that we'd be dealt to that to the chosen creature is dealt to Joffrey instead. I think that's actually kind of kind of fitting. I would. I mean, we do already have a lot of cards in the game that a lot some iconic characters that summon uh, creatures or summon uh, other like token minions. Which is kind of what I think Joffrey could have been, because he is the Grandmaster of the Blades. and Or you, you could have like him as a double card, where you got Brother Joffrey, you know, the peaceful monk at Wayne and Priory. And then you have Grandmaster Joffrey, the uh, leader of the Blades. But I like this effect. I like this effect. It definitely does get on the Blades' protective nature and their duty to protect the Emperor, which I... I'm kind of hoping that maybe we see, uh, like we don't, hmm. I'm kind of in part, I, I don't know if I want to see Martin as a card in the game. And like, I, 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 on one hand, I do. The other hand, I think it would be interesting to see, like, no, actually, better, good idea, good idea. So you have Martin, and you have the Amulet of Kings. And when Martin is equipped with the Amulet of, King, uh, Amulet of Kings, it banishes both Martin and the Amulet of Kings from the game and summons a, the a, uh, Avatar of Akatosh. And obviously, it's going to have to be like a pretty high cost card. Like, they both have to be pretty high cost, so I'd say maybe 8 and 8. And the creature that would summon would be, you know, something like a 12 or 11 cost, but has like an insane amount of power. Like, just a lot, very strong. 
and some cra- like some crazy effect. Maybe that it can't be targeted by uh, actions, or or actually no, it can't be targeted by creatures, and cannot be, or maybe cannot be destroyed by actions. Like you can weaken it, but you can't actually do a killing blow with actions. I would, I, I, that would definitely require some thinking around, but I, that, that would be pretty cool. Obviously, I don't think we're going to see that kind of stuff, that, that stuff just yet, but I'm pretty excited. So they, they, they do go into a bit of detail about him up here, as well as the card, what they think about, what uh, the gamer PC gamer thinks about it. Personally, I'm pretty excited. And... I, I I can't wait to you know I can't wait to get my hands on this expansion. I'm so happy, mm, really excited, really excited. So between sometime between the launch of this expansion and or before this offer goes away, and now I will be pre-purchasing it so that we have a bunch of card packs to open, as well as I'm gonna slowly be working on getting enough gold to be able to purchase a bunch of packs. I got 19 tickets here. I'm going to be playing through the through these gauntlets. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to stream. I might not stream this one. I'm going to be posting another uh, video at the end of the week kind of of a bit of a content update. Just a change just a slight change up in the schedule. Nothing nothing too major, but hopefully we can score like it's a one ticket entry, so you know, ideally I shoot for five like five wins with this retro. I'm gonna have to think of a good retro deck to run. I have a couple in mind. But I'm not a hundred percent sure. Like so many cards have been changed in nerf. One thing that we won't see uh, is conscription. Or any of the triple class. So this is good this is back when actually when I was starting out. Like we Playing a lot back way back, way back then. Like this gauntlet's basically the, it could be centered around my uh, back when I had the quest to two grand gold to two k gold, so that I could purchase uh, at the time all of the Skyrim sets in the shop. No, not not packs. Now, where is it? Special offers. It's under here. So I could purchase all of these from the shop. That that's that's how far back we're going. Also, when I did the uh, Clockwork City rundown as well, I still got to get the master modes of everything put up. I do want to work on that at some point, but not not until that until we hit a point where I'm just going eh, kind of bored of this. But anyways, I'm gonna leave before I continue to ramble on. So this was kind of a Joffrey review, like a slight Joffrey review, uh, prankster mage review as well as a little tidbit of lore there and kind of hype for the retro gauntlet that's coming up can't wait i cannot wait at all thank you guys for watching leave a like if you enjoyed hit the subscribe button if you really enjoyed don't forget to share this video or any of my other videos to anybody who you think will enjoy my content next time you see me hopefully i'm gonna have i got a, some time tomorrow that i'm gonna be doing the voiceovers of like it like re recording over so uh, some Elder Scrolls Legends uh, past co content that I made in the past, like from the past two gauntlets, and I think I got enough games in both of them that I could do uh, two, like two vi two separate videos on each. So hopefully that should kind of catch up a little bit. I've got one more um, Elder Scrolls related video coming out that should be coming out a bit later tonight so if you're watching this the day this is upload go check back for the other one should be up by that until next time take it easy